Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Game Play video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue deck titled Snow Spirits, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a mono blue tempo deck that you might be familiar with, playing cheap creatures backed up by draw enchantments like Curiosity and Curious Obsession, and then some cheap counter spells to protect those creatures and to disrupt the opponent's game plan. And the interesting twist here is that we're also a spirit tribal deck with four copies of Supreme Phantom, a 1-3 flyer, giving other spirits we control plus one plus one, and we also get to play with Snow lands, 20 snow-covered islands, as well as two copies of Faceless Haven as a nice creature land that shines against opposing control decks, and those will help us activate our Ascendant Spirit, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one snow creature spirit, that for 2 snow mana turns into a 2-3 spirit warrior, then for 3 mana subsequently turns into a 4-4 four, four spirit warrior angel with a flying counter on it, and if it's an angel and we activate it for 4 snow mana, it gets 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card, and that ability also stacks so we can put potentially activate it multiple times and draw multiple cards per attack. And the reason Ascendant Spirit is so good, besides being a spirit that synergizes with our Supreme Phantom, is that we can sometimes just pass the turn with a bunch of our mana available, and then if the opponent doesn't play into our counter spells, we can simply sink that mana into activating our Ascendant Spirit so our mana doesn't go to waste. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we also have four copies of Spectral Sailor as a 1-1 Spirit Pirate with Flash and Flying, and for four mana also gets to draw a card, so another nice mana sink. At two mana besides Supreme Phantom we have the full playset of Rattle Chains as a 2-1 Spirit with Flash and Flying, so we can play it at instant speed, and whenever Rattle Chains enters the battlefield, target spirit gains Hexproof until end of turn, so it can protect one of our spirits from a removal spell, and we may cast spirit spells as though they had Flash, so all of a sudden all our spirits gain Flash and we can play everything at instant speed. Then we've got our Supreme Phantom, two copies of Nubble Gas Herald, a 2-1 Spirit with Flash and Flying, and when Herald or another Spirit enters a battlefield under our control, we can tap target creature and opponent controls. So great to play at the beginning of combat before the opponent gets a chance to attack, makes it very difficult for the opponent to race if we can flash in a few Spirits. And then we also have the full playset of Brazen Borrower, not a spirit, but still very powerful in these decks, as we can play the 2-mana Petty Theft Adventure first, bouncing target non-land permanent and opponent controls, and then afterwards a 3-1 Flash Flyer that can only block creature with flying, but we're usually interested in turning it sideways anyway. Also very good with our 1-mana enchantments, 2 copies of Curiosity, whenever the enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent we may draw a card, and the full playset of Curious Obsession, which also gives plus 1 plus 1, but we're forced to attack with a creature, otherwise the obsession will fall off. Then we have some cheap counter spells with two copies of Spell Pierce to counter target a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two generic mana. And then we also have two copies of Memory Lapse as another all-purpose counter spell that puts the counter spell back on top of the opponent's deck. And then the full playset of Lofty Denial, which can counter target spell unless its controller pays one, but if we control a creature with flying, we can counter that spell unless its controller pays four mana instead, and there's no shortage of flying creatures in the deck. And then also two copies of Stern Dismissal as another cheap bounce spell to complement our Brazen Borrower. And then a mana base we discuss 20 snow-covered islands and two faceless havens. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We've got to turn one Ascendant Spirit and then turn two we'll have to make a decision whether we commit to Curiosity or try and wait until we can keep up protection with Lofty Denial. And then we need the Spectral Sailor to make sure we have a flying creature or we can level up our Ascendant Spirit until it flies before this turns into a hard counter. Breeding Pool into our Boreal Grazer. Actually surprisingly effective against our deck and Curiosity, so not a card we wanted to see. Now we'll just pass. And then... Might be better off leveling up Ascendant Spirits. This might be a combo deck. Maybe this is a uh, Seagate Stormcaller deck. Never mind, Peer into the Abyss. So probably gonna try and cast it out of the graveyard, is my guess, with the Mizzix Mastery. So end of turn. Put in plate Steam Vents untapped, maybe for an opt. I think we just level up Ascendant Spirits. Because we're gonna need a 4-4 to get past the Grazer. And then we can counter Mastery. We could even flash in Sailor to have a flyer in case one mana's not enough. 
and my opponent had a brainstorm end of turn. And then if our opponent just passes, we can activate our Ascendant Spirits. Or we could flash in some Spirits as well. Thrill's fine. As we see, Emergent Ultimatum going to be targeted by Mystic's Mastery. So if they go for Mystic's Mastery, we let Mastery resolve and then counter the copy so it gets exiled from their graveyard. Level up Spirits. And then it's probably going to get chumped if I put a Curiosity on it. I may still get chumped if I attack now. Yeah, going for a Curiosity I guess is fine. Get that Gracer out of the way so it can block our other flyers. And then we'll pass with Sailor plus Denial available. Then next turn I could decide to activate Spirits instead of playing out more creatures. Right, it's going to be another Cathartic. A lot of uh, expensive spells in the graveyard here. Serpone's digging for Mastery in case they don't have one already. And then end of turn I can still make use of my mana with Rattle Chains and Sailor. Alright, so we'll attack. Could flash in Supreme Phantom 2 for additional damage and we'll still have Lofty Denial available. This will turn it into a two-turn clock. And then Lofty Denial should be good enough here. Unless they have a Counterspell backup. Omniscience in the graveyard, have they found Mizzix Mastery? Alright, there it is. So we can let Mastery resolve counter the copy, although at this point it doesn't really matter since the game's over. And attack for win. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Facing turn one elves, so probably not going to be a great matchup for spell pierce. Unless they've got a collected company, we can maybe counter. Red green, so maybe a gruel aggro deck. Stone rain. All right. Well, so it's a land destruction deck. Do we want a obsession? and get blown out by a stomp, or do we keep up Spell Pierce? I think we keep up Spell Pierce. Now we can still play Sailor end of turn if needed. Chandra we can counter. Stomp we cannot counter, so that happens. And then we can still play our Sailor. Goose can block, but once we put the obsession on the sailor, we are clear for takeoff. Another cure obsession. So if I double cure obsession, we still get blown out by Chandra. So would like to keep up spell pierce if possible. So is it play single obsession? Then stomp is bad, or I can play supreme phantom. Hit for two, but then Chandra resolves and is going to be somewhat annoying. Could pass, but then we're not using our mana efficiently, so I think going single obsession, keep up spell pierce, is probably the safest line. Although it can get punished by another stomp. Opponent chumps with a goose. Fair enough. Alright, they had another stomp, unfortunately. Gonna hang on to the spell pierce instead of tapping them out. And then we'll try again with another sailor here. But racing the giants is also gonna be tough. 
to an rain we can counter. And then can obsession plus phantom. Could also herald in their upkeep. Tap down the elf to deny one mana since it seemed to be stuck on mana somewhat. And then hold obsession for another turn. So this is kind of our version of land destruction. Another Gilded Goose. We can tap down as soon as we play Phantom. Now another Stomp could punish me for going for Obsessions. I think I hang on to Obsession for one more turn and maybe put it on the Phantom. Which is more difficult to kill. And then the question is whether I want to bounce the elf now. Think I do. Opponent sacrifices a food token. So your opponent finds land four, they have five mana, could potentially cast a primal command. Elder Gergroth or Glorybringer would have been reasons to hang on to the Dismissal. But it's just going to be Primal Commands. Putting our land back on top. It's not the Underworld. But they will be able to find one of the aforementioned creatures as we see Gergroth. So Cure's Obsession. Probably still worth playing. And then we gotta hope to draw more Spirits to tap down the Gergroth next turn. They also still need a fifth mana. Demolisher, okay, so now they have a 6-6 six, six flying goose. Although they're still dead if we draw a spirit here. Brazen Borrower will do it too. All right, we managed to survive a turn two stone rain. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hands. No one mana creature, but a turn two rattle chains can wear a curiosity potentially, and lofty denial as protection. Sun spirits a turn late here. Could still play the Ascendant Spirits and put a Curiosity on it, that's a bit all in. So I think I still go with the Rattle Chains, that way a ground creature can block our creature as easily. The upside of keeping Rattle Chains is that it can protect Spirit from a removal spell. But now we can Curiosity and keep a Lofty Denial. And then next turn we'll deploy spirits. Can also end of turn play Ascendant Spirit if we don't need to Lofty Denial, thanks to the Randall Chains' ability. Magma Opus put in the graveyard so they can potentially flash that back using either Mystic's Mastery or Torrential Gearhulk. So, go for end of turn Ascendant Spirits. A little bit punished, I guess, for playing Haven before taking my extra draw. Alright, Prismari Command kills Rattle Chains. It's too bad. Still level up Ascendant Spirits. Could also bounce the Treasure Tokens if we want. I guess the drawback now is that Lofty Denial isn't a hard counter since we don't have a Flyer in play anymore.
creativity will bounce the treasure in response. They can sacrifice it to Fizzle Brazen Borrower, but they don't get their creativity at least. Brainstorm response. So our opponent's a Velomachus deck. So next turn we can make this into a flyer and then Lofty Denial turns into a hard counter. Definitely could have played the game differently where we tried to protect our Vandal Chains and didn't end of turn play Ascendant Spirit to make sure we kept up our counter. Supreme Phantom's nice but I think I still prefer activate Ascendant Spirits. And then next turn we can use our mana efficiently. Another Brazen Bar were great against another Creativity. So I think I just attack, play another Ascendant Spirits and pass. And then we keep up both Lofty Denial and Petty Theft. And our opponent's potentially facing lethal next turn. So they need to make a big play here. Prismari Command to make another treasure that resolves. The one concern is our opponents having enough mana to pay for Lofty Denial. We also have Faceless Haven as another creature that could help us get across the finish line in case the Ascendant Spirit gets answered. Although pumping this and then playing Supreme Phantom is also a damage. Opponent on taps. They could hard cast Velomachus too. Creativity targeting two tokens. We'll let that resolve and then just bounce Velomachus. Seems fine. They get to keep one of them. And then before they can attack, we can bounce it. And then level up Ascendant Spirit, end of turn. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. With a fine opening hand. No counter spells, but just a good curve of creatures and tribal synergy. And then Petty Theft as our interaction. Opponent Monorad, maybe Goblins. As we see, turn to Snoop. Play Phantom, I'm okay with the trade. Opponent's got a Mountain on top, takes it to damage. Another Mountain into Chieftain. And we can block the Chieftain. Curious Obsession is a nice one, so I think I'm gonna Obsession, probably the Phantom, so we have it on an evasive creature. Can keep Ascendant Spirit back, which can also threaten to pump, and then we can still Petty Theft if needed. So they don't really have a good attack on the ground. Goblin Matron is next, so that can find all sorts of scary creatures like Krenko and Muxus. Could have also put a stop on upkeep to bounce Snoop. Second Chieftain, that's fine. They still don't really have a good attack with the Chieftains since we can pump with Spirits. So we drop to 10. Supreme Phantom can keep attacking. And then we can unload a bunch of spirits here. Harold can tap stuff down too. 
And our opponent doesn't have the mana to cast Muxus yet. So yeah, the surprise 3-4 spirit thanks to Phantom pumping it up. Maybe your opponent didn't realize that interaction. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, we were gonna play Herald, play Sailor, tap two attackers down, untap, and potentially be able to tap down another blocker by just main phasing Spectral Sailor. So that would have been almost enough to deal lethal damage. So would have been in a pretty good spot here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Some bounce spells, some creatures. Playing the mirror match. Take the one. And then I would like the Phantom to resolve. So I maybe have to wait until next turn to play it so we can counter a counter. And for now just pass. Spectral Sailor resolves. And another Sailor resolves. Opponent goes for a Curse Obsession. So if I dismissal, they can use Storm Tamer and then we can Spell Pierce. If I Spell Pierce, they could just pay for it. So this way we trade for two of the opponent's cards. And if they denial, we can spell pierce the denial, which also works. Alright, so obsession is dealt with, and now we can resolve Supreme Phantom, which does a pretty good job on defense. And still have spell pierce backup. So our opponent's kind of playing the classic tempo deck, we're playing spirits, so Supreme Phantom, pretty good in a mirror match. Opponent still attacking. Mm, not sure what this implies. But I guess we'll block a Storm Tamer. Dive down, but that's still fine by me. Uh -huh, C dash or Octopus. Okay, so they get to draw one card. And Stern Dismissal could clean that up. But now I kind of like deploying more creatures. So, Ascendant Spirit, keep up interaction, end of turn, level it up. Opponent can flash in Spectral Sailor. And then could eat the sailor, could block the octopus. Probably eat the sailor still. And I'll let damage happen. Even though we could have bounced the uh, octopus here. Doesn't seem necessary. Curious Obsession, that resolves. I want to interact with Octopus in my turn once I have more mana available. Could also end of turn bounce and then untap so we can have even more interaction, but we'll just level up Ascendant Spirit here. Rattle Chains, good too. Could go for Dismissal plus Brazen Borrow now, or I could wait until the opponent's turn. Could also Rattle Chains tap it down, although could get countered. And then this gets to connect, so I think I'd rather Hit with Ascendant Spirits, and then in the opponent's turn. Could do it in their upkeep so they can draw more counter spells, or could do it now so they only have three mana as opposed to four. But if we do it now, they can just replay the Octopus and the Sailor. So I'll let them untap, see what they do, and then upkeep. Lead with Dismissal. 
And see what they do about it. All right, lofty denial resolves. And then we'll petty thefts. And that works. And now we also have the Brazen Borer available as a creature. So that all worked out nicely. Had we done this in our turn, we could have spell pierced the Lofty Denial and they wouldn't have been able to pay for it. So both approaches would have been valid. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a Fine Hands. Sailor with a Cure Obsession and then Spell Pierce and Rattle Chains to protect it. Turn one Snow Covered Mountain into Warlord's Fury. So maybe some sort of Kill Fiends deck or. Arclight Phoenix. Magmatic Channeler resolves. So if we go for Obsession and our opponent goes land into either Shock or Frostbite, we won't be able to Spell Pierce. I think I should wait one more turn until we can leave up Rattle Chains to protect the Sailor. And then I'm probably going to end up using the petty thefts end of turn, unless we need to spell pierce something. Stinkin resolves. And a crash through resolves as well. So now do we bounce Steamkin or Channeler? Probably Steamkin. And then now it feels relatively safe to Cure Obsession. Although it could still get punished by two cheap removal spells. And then ideally we get to use our Rattle Chains to protect Sailor. Replay Steamkin. And a crash through. Could spell pierce that just to use my mana, since spell pierce is losing effectiveness pretty quickly. And channeler finds faithless looting and crash through. Do they have a line to go with it? They don't. And now we've got Lofty Denial available, so that should be great. Probably wanted to damage first in case we drew Faceless Haven. Can pass, could even activate Spectral Sailor, but most likely gonna play Brazen Borer now. Frostbite, we can try and protect with Rattle Chains. Channeler now a 4-4, so it can hit pretty hard, so they might be able to outrace us on the ground. Grinning Ignis, I see. Sir opponents, probably the Ignis Bergy combo deck. Uh, yeah, we could counter it, just to not have them put a 2-2 in play. Although Steamkin and Channeler are kind of the problem cards. So we'll have to find some bounce spells. And then we should be fine. Flooding a little bit here. Another Rattle Chains. So we can flash in both Flyers end of turn. Chandler are gonna activate so they're not trying to race anymore. Finds Monuments and Grinning Ignis. So opponents may be close to comboing. They can level up the Steamkin with a Grinning Ignis. They might have a Grape Shot in hand.
And I guess Grape Shell just kills me too here. If I draw with Sailor, there's no one mana counter I can draw to save me. Although I could draw a one mana bounce spell. So I'm assuming our opponent has a Grape Shot in hand. So the only way to prevent Grape Shot from killing me is by bouncing the Steamkin so they can make infinite mana. Alright, that's not an answer. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hands. Could use Curiosity or Cure Obsession to draw more cards with our Vandal Chains. Turn one Breeding Pool Abundant Harvest. Spectral Sailor's not bad, gives us a one mana play. So not sure what the opponent's up to yet. Brainstorm, okay. So blue-green, maybe combo deck. And a Fabled Passage to shuffle away the cards they put back on top. And there's Cure Obsession. Still gonna wait one turn to go for it, so we have additional protection from Rattle Chains and our two mana counters. Although it could easily be a matchup where the opponent doesn't have any cheap removal spells. Opponent fetches a forest. And foretells a card. What could that be? Not entirely sure. Don't mind playing the Randall Chains though. And then we'll Obsession. And have our counter spell up. So our opponent needs to be able to cast multiple impactful spells in the same turn. And after turn brainstorm resolves. And as soon as we find land 4, we'll have double counter spell available, making it very difficult for the opponent to resolve anything. Two mana for an explorer, that's fine. Ooh, Blast Zone. Blast Zone on one can clean up Spectral Sailor and Cure Obsession. Can get our last uh, draw from Cure Obsession. And then these might be Alrun's Epiphany in our opponent's uh, Time Walk deck. We'll see. But we got our opponent down to 9. We can flash in Brazen Borrower as an extra threat, so we're not in terrible shape. So opponent passes with a whole bunch of mana up. I think we just played a Borrower. Since we'll need the added pressure once Sailor's dealt with. And a Phantom's not bad. Could also activate Faceless Haven, which would technically give me lethal, but it seems a little risky. 
I guess I can beat one fog effect, but if they have two, then I'm tapped out and they could potentially resolve multiple epiphanies. So I think I kind of like just attacking and keeping up two counter spells here. And then we might see Blast Zone being activated. Alright. Says the opponent back on the land as well. And then... We'll pass with two counter spells up. Could have also flashed in Phantom after Blast Zone, thanks to Rattle Chains. Giving Phantom Flash, but when our opponent's at four and they're facing lethal next turn, it's probably better to keep up as much interaction as possible. And Time Warp is going to get countered, and that's game. Could flash in the Phantom too. So yeah, opponent was trying to take extra turns, but not against this deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Speaker of the Heavens. So a life gain deck. Um, we'll go with Ascendant Spirit so we can potentially block the Speaker next turn. Turn two Pride Maid's gonna grow, although we can bounce it with Dismissal or Brazen Borrower still. And then we'll pass. Youthful Valkyrie's okay. And then we'll block Speaker, Pump Spirits. And then pass it back. Could also cure Obsession on the Spirit attack, which is not a bad play. And then maybe end of turn bounce the Pride Mates. And we can always give the Spirit Flying by paying three snow mana. Another Pride Mate, I could Lofty Denial as well here. Don't have a Flyer in play, but our opponent doesn't have the mana to pay for it. So we can try to tempo our opponent out of the game. Can play another Phantom, hit for four, have Dismissal available. Righteous Valkyrie resolves. And we'll block and bounce Sprite Mates. And then now we could bounce Valkyrie, counter it on the way back. This way they don't draw another land for the turn. If I activate Faceless Haven, that's 10 exactly, since it has all creature types. And our opponent packs it in. So Mono Blue Spirits is definitely a powerful historic deck that can punish some of the combo decks trying to resolve powerful 4-mana instants and sorceries thanks to all the cheap counter spells we have available. It can struggle against hyper-aggressive decks like maybe a mono red burn deck, although there's not too many of those out there. So definitely a powerful choice, but do keep in mind that you'll get some early concessions when playing this in the play queue, since people don't really like playing against this style of deck. But then again, if you're trying to get your daily wins, it's not a bad thing. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.